G'day everyone, just uh, another little quick video to sort of show you what I'm doing and what I'm playing with. Um, yeah, so anyway, this is a, a Spartan 3E uh, startup board I've had for ages and I've used for many, many projects in the past. But I thought I'd just show you something I was working on um, or I plan on using. Anyway, this is a ZP. We know, which is a, a ZPU based uh, soft core processor that is set up um, to basically emulate the Arduino. Um, it's running in the um, Spartan 3 500 um, FPGA sitting there, and um, took a lot of stuff around um, to get the Arduino side of things to work. Um, as you can see, it's running away here, and if I turn the knob, you can see it scrolls the thing. So this is actually the soft core processor in use, so it's, it's running a, a ZP, a ZPUENO, whatever you want to pronounce it. Um, uh, what, are they, what are they called, Arduino? Not scripts, um, sketches, sorry. Okay, so this is a sketch. This is the demo sketch that comes off the ZPUENO's website, which you can see the URL for there um, but um, yeah so basically what I am mucking around with this for is I was after a, a soft core processor that has um, a wishbone compliant bus um, so the ZP, ZPU CPU soft core CPU has said um, wishbone compliant bus and it's 32 bits and it has a GCC compiler which they've made it's a stack based CPU so it, it, it's I wouldn't say it's limited but it um, it's not necessarily the most efficient CPU on the planet um, but for what I need as far as my little project I'm working on which I'm sure to do videos of soon I don't know if the switch is doing anything um, yeah I need uh, something that can just sort of control a wishbone bus to push data backwards and forwards or at least not really push it but just uh, monitor it and, and provide some sort of user interface um, and yeah I didn't really want to have to go digging through making my own CPU or setting up something that was quite large and complex like um, one of the open risks or um, any of those sort of CPUs that I see on open core. I just saw that one and it came with a GCC compiler and I thought oh well if I can get the Arduino thing going um, fairly easily then um, it's probably a really good candidate. Well it wasn't easy to set it up <laughs> um, be it my Windows setup and uh, getting Xilinx's uh, tools to work in Windows 8 and then going damn this I'm gonna go over to my Linux box and then realizing that none of the Arduino stuff ever really works very well because of the stupid RT RX TX library that Arduino uses isn't you know the native JNI library that comes with it is crap and never works in Linux properly and it's a headache and then finding out that the bit file that came that <laughs> got loaded onto this um, FPGA because of some timing issue the one on their website was not compatible with my board and in, in a news group somewhere the guy who wrote this actually put another 1.01 .01 version of the bit file which happened to have the right timings and then I finally got that working on my Windows box with a serial port USB cable which is plugged in there which was again another nightmare to get going with Windows but worked first time on my Linux box so it was a plethora of problems I was almost tempted to crack out the Apple but I didn't because I figured that would just add another another variable into the mix and uh, I really didn't need that I figured if I can do it with my Linux box I can do it with the Mac so um, the only thing that really had a trouble which probably would have been a bit easier on the Mac would have been the Arduino IDE itself because I'm no doubt someone's probably packaged up one quite nicely that works with the common standard crap that comes on the OS X whereas my Fedora 18 or whatever it is that's installed has probably not got the right libc versions for the friggin pre-compiled serial port driver which this thing doesn't even use the friggin serial port driver it uses a, its own programming tool so it's just a stupid idea anyway this is turning a bit of a rant um, but anyway upside of this is the GCC compiler obviously works because this code was compiled and um, the actual code was uploaded to the CPU the CPU obviously works because it's 
jiggery pokering the LEDs there and it seems to be working. Um, I've looked at the source code for the CPU and it's understandable. Um, I can certainly hack on it so I'm very happy with it. Um, it's going to be very basic sort of, the CPU is not going to be used for a lot, as I said, just for sort of a UE. Um, most of the intelligence will be in um, state machines and stuff like that inside the FPGA. Um, anything that's kind of a bit nasty is the CPU is written in um, VHDL, which is not nasty, it's just I don't know VHDL, v, v, VHDL very well, uh, if at all. I'm, I'm much more comfortable using Verilog. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, idea for this thing is it's going to be running on one of the Papilio One um, little boards. Um, I'm going to st string two Bluetooth modules onto a little shield or whatever they call it for that thing, a cape or I don't know, that's a big old bone. Um, anyway, a, a card to sit on top of the um, Papilio One with two Bluetooth modules. Um, they'll be sp spitting out I2 I2S um, sound streams. Um, I'm going to be mixing the two sound streams together with a another codec that I'm going to have on board and then outputting the result to one of the Bluetooth modules so that um, I can digitally control the um, the sound coming out of the headset. Basically um, I've got the nuts and bolts sort of working. Um, I've got the Bluetooth module which if I swing over here uh, I've had the analyzer turn a lot on. I've had the analyzer plugged into the the um, digital audio output. Um, the module's a bit silly in the sense of it, the PCM. Well, it's not silly. Um, the PCM mode is limited to eight kilohertz, which is pretty rubbish for um, A2DP audio. So um, I've had to switch it to I I2S mode, which is yeah, it'll go up to 48 kilohertz, which is more than enough. Um, and yeah, so. There's the, the Papilio. I've got a couple of them floating around. Um, so yeah, so that's sort of why I want the ZPU uh, running in the FPGA, which is just going to be monitoring a bunch of buffers and um, toying with the idea of doing floating point math to do the actual mixing, audio mixing, other than just basic integer maths to sort of allow me to do attenuation and stuff like that. Um, but uh, we'll see how that goes. And there's a couple of FPU cores and they seem fairly uh, easy to understand <laughs> as much as FPUs are easy to understand and floating point in general um, but I was going to give it a crack given that this is sort of a just a interesting project and if I hit a stumbling block I'll try and knuckle through it and if I don't then I'll try and find something else but anyway just a quick little video which is now almost 10 minutes so not exactly quick um, yeah I'll catch you later